Hi, my name is Mark Hoffman. I am the Small Fruits Extension Specialist at North Carolina State University. This is the second of a series of videos on plastic culture uh, in strawberries in North Carolina. And today we are at the North Carolina Department of Agriculture Research Station in Clayton, North Carolina. Scientists from NC State do strawberry research here for more than two decades. And today we are going to explain the basics of plastic culture in one of our research plots. So it's May and that's the peak season of strawberries in North Carolina. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about the bed dimensions and then we go over the typical problems you see at this time of the year in the strawberry field. After that I will show you how to take a tissue sample from your strawberry plant and then I will give an overview about the most important resources for you at this time of the year to make sure your strawberry crop stays healthy. The typical bed size in North Carolina is about 6 to 8 inches wide and about 52 to 60 inches from center to center. The typical planting space between the plants is between 12 and 16 inches and it really depends on the region where you're at and what variety you use. If you're in a region where your plants are not that vigorous, you use a 12 inch planting space. However, if you are in a region or if you use a variety which is very vigorous, you will have to increase your planting space in order to give the plants enough space to grow. So fertility is one of the major concerns in spring and to stay on top of your fertility management, you want to use tissue samples which you send frequently to the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Service. To take a tissue sample, you want to use about 25 to 30 samples of the same variety in your plot and you use the most recent fully developed trifolia. To take the most recent uh, developed trifolia, you take a young, a young leaf and you pinch off the whole leaf at the base. And you have two parts to the leaf, the petiole and the trifoliate. And you want to send those separately. So you pinch off the petiole and the trifoliate so that you have a petiole sample and the trifoliate, those can go into separate bags and you send them to the North Carolina Department of Agriculture. Heat, heavy rainfalls and diseases are the major problems we have at this time of the year in the strawberry season. I want to demonstrate how rain can affect your strawberry uh, fruit and to do that I use a bottle of water. Those two fruit sit in this water for a very long time and become smushy and not marketable anymore. To avoid this situation, you need to make sure that you lay the plastic correctly. We will have a separate video on how to lay plastic. With bushy, vigorous canopy like we have in this case, you often have a problem in the inside of the canopy with spray penetration and with humidity and with water. That leads to, besides the water damage I showed, that leads to a lot of buildup of diseases especially gray mold and anthracnose. I'm going to show you how gray mold looks like on a strawberry fruit. I'm going to show you how anthracnose looks like on a strawberry fruit. And then after that, I will give you resources how to manage resistance in those pathogens and how to manage those diseases with pesticides. Botrytis or gray mold is a pathogen which feeds on the sugar of your fruit and develops a gray mold on your fruit. This is a typical example how it looks like. It can overwinter and it, is, it can be found in the flowers of fruit and it needs to be controlled very early in the season. Anthracnose fruit rot or uh, Colletoctium acutatum shows little black spots on your fruit like this one here which then again makes the fruit un, uh, not marketable and needs to be controlled. Both pathogens can build up resistance against certain fungicides and need to be tested frequently every year uh, to make sure that the fungicides you are using are actually effective against those pathogens. To find more information on resistance, please visit the Clemson Resistance Profiling homepage. There is also an app which I find very useful, My IPM app. It explains you a lot about your diseases which you find that helps you identify problems in your strawberry field and if you want to know uh, a spray program or if you want to know more information about what materials you can use in your strawberry field please visit smallfruits.org. Please also don't forget 
to visit our strawberry portal and I hope I see you soon again. Until then, please stay happy, kind and healthy.